Chair, the introduction of bans, especially by politicians who aren't directly affected by them. And I had the same uh, idea about this. But then I looked at the situation in reality. And I found out, for instance, that Fawcett, a great Irish circus that has been touring for over 130 years, did not oppose a ban on wild animals being introduced in 2018 in Ireland, as they had voluntarily stopped performing with wild animals in 2005. And of course, that we have a, ban, a full or partial ban in 23 member states actually makes sense at this time to move to a full EU-wide ban. Because while some have expressed concern that a ban of this sort will damage the circus industry, I think the example of Fawcett's says otherwise. The public at large is no longer comfortable supporting the use of wild animals in circuses, and high animal welfare standards, in fact, attract customers. This year I worked as the EPP Shadow Rapporteur on two files in AFCO Committee regarding citizens' participation in EU decision-making. Particularly now, during the Conference on the Future of Europe, it is vital that the voices of EU citizens are heard. The Stop Circus suffering campaign has collected over a million signatures on their petition to date, exceeding the threshold required for a European citizens initiative. We must ask ourselves, why didn't the organisers of this petition create an ECI? Perhaps it is because, while we've had six successful ECIs to date, including most recently on the use of cages for farmed animals, unfortunately you have to ask the question, how much of an impact have they had? To encourage citizens' engagement and prevent disillusionment, the Commission must do better in engaging genuinely with valid ECIs. It's clear that animal welfare is a priority of many EU citizens and we have a duty to express their will.